I know when you got in with Mr. Rogers, was it his idea to make you a police officer? Mm. I think that's a fascinating story. It's a, a totally his idea. Uh, it made me very, very, very unhappy. It shocked me mm -hmm. when he first uh, mentioned and brought the subject up because I had such a different idea of what policemen did because of the reality of what I grew up like in Youngstown, Ohio, in the ghetto. Sure. And they were very abusive. They took advantage. Uh, there are a lot of things that, if you want the details, they're in my book. You know, I just uh, finished a memoir that's going to be published on May 5th. Uh, I'll be down in New York in case anybody wants to come down and see me. Well, we definitely anyway, wanted to come see you, and we will put the links to it. We will put, we will help you get that book out. Oh, I, I want to read much. it. I think that'll be uh, fascinating. Thank you. Anyway, I talk about that in the book. I try to give a little bit more insight mm -hmm. into uh, what kind of a uh, position I felt I had been placed in. But this is a great opportunity to be uh, to have this opportunity to learn so much uh, around this man who was proving to be a real shaker, you know, in, in the Pittsburgh scene. Everybody knew him. Uh, they didn't know about the program yet because it was so new, brand new. But they knew about Fred and uh, knew about some of his ideas. He had spoken to some friends and some people at the Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. So um, I tried to share with him what a uh, profoundly repugnant idea it was for me to put on a policeman's uniform. And I, I just didn't see myself making that kind of an adjustment. I felt that if I was very happy. I could sing on the show. I said, well, come on. I am a singer and uh, I have a master's, a, a bachelor's degree. I'm going to get a master's. Why can't I be Professor Clemens or something like that, uh, right. architect or a, a manager of some business or other. I don't know. I named a bunch of things that I thought were what I call respectable. Sure. And uh, he started talking to me about helpers. I'll never forget how that word really uh, made an impact, helpers. And he said, you know, when young children are lost or when they're separated from their parents or they're hurt, the first thing they do is look around for somebody, you know, they're, they're helpless to help them. And he said, I tend to think of policemen as a helper. And he said, you know, there are probably lots and lots of people in America, particularly black people, who think like you do. But maybe we could show them another humane side of the policeman and show the policeman doing things in the community that are positive, like everybody else. Well, he continued to talk, and he made quite an impression on me, and I, I like to feel like I'm a helper. That's my personality. So when he mentioned that, he got my attention. And we talked about it. It was a very, uh, I'd say maybe a couple of months, we had these intense conversations about what kind of a role I would be doing on this program. First of all, I was very happy. He asked me to be a regular. Uh, the value of being on that program on a regular basis cannot be measured because there I was 24 years old living in uh, Pittsburgh and there were no black actors who appeared regularly on children's television. And I began to get a perspective of what show business was like and the, the mountain that I had to climb and other black actors and actresses had to climb so that uh, to have the opportunity to come on that program as often as it turns out was a great, great, great honor, distinction, uh, impetus to my career. I would say it probably made my career. I built a lot of things around it, but for me, it was a focal. Unlike some of the other characters, my favorite, Betty Aberlon and Mr. Feely, mm -hmm. they were there all the time. Right. And my, and my way of thinking, that was a full-time job open to them, but I don't think that option was open to me. And so I went on to New York, and when I said, announced that I was going to New York, I said, but you'll come back and visit, won't you? <laughs> oh, I said, you want me to come back? <laughs> I thought he was going to say, I'm through with you. <laughs> and I said, oh, no, we want you to come back, and he said, we sat down and once again, 
we had these discussions which helped me to gain a deeper, richer feeling about this friendship that it wasn't just about doing a job and about money. He was interested in me, Francois Clemens, as a human being on many different levels. As you know, there are other sure. subjects that will be discussed that we um, also were discussing. So uh, I thought, well, you know, this man, he's not rash. He's not uh, trying to force me. His logic is um, very powerful, very powerful. <laughs>